Hi there, welcome to Nephi Invest. January tends to be one of my favorite months of the year because it is quarterly reporting month. Those companies that need to release a quarterly report have to do it by the end of January. Uh, they can release it on the February 1st, but they have to release it before training begins on that day. And typically, the first few weeks of January tend to be quiet because uh, companies are in a slumber. Their uh, management have gone on their annual leave over the Christmas period, and they are gradually coming back. So we're starting to see more and more companies release their quarter report for the December quarter. And this is the week we're starting to see more and more of these reports being released. And typically, I will do an Appendix 4C video for the company that releases the first Appendix 4C or 5B for the month. Now, Little Green Pharma, which is my first Appendix 4C for the December quarter, was not the first company to release their Appendix 4C. There were a couple of other companies, I think three other companies that did release their quarter report, but none of those companies generate any cash receipts or revenue. So I'd like to focus on those companies that actually have a business. They're actually selling something and receiving some revenue. So that's where Little Green Pharma comes into play. They were the first company that is generating uh, sales that did release their Appendix 4C. And not only that, this was a request from a viewer of this channel. So because there was a request and because it was the first company, a uh, legitimate company that released their Appendix 4C, I thought I would do a video on this company, even though this company is not operating cash flow positive. A few of the other companies that did release their Appendix 4C before Little Green Pharma include Protein Energy. But Protein Energy uh, shares are in a suspension right now. And the reason they're in suspension, and they were suspended on the 10th of October 2022, because ASX determined that Protein Energy operations are not adequate to warrant the continued quotation of its securities and therefore is in breach of listing rule 12.1. So I'm not even having a look at Protein Energy. I did have a look at Anatara Life Sciences. They are a biotech company in the gastrointestinal space. They are not generating any revenue, so they're just doing research, developing drugs in that area. Another company, a few companies that have released their Appendix 4C just before I started recording this video include two pretty big companies that I definitely will be doing a video on, Volpara and Telix Pharmaceuticals. Both companies had their very first operating cash flow positive quarter and share prices for both of those companies up big at the start of trading on the 18th of January. I'm recording this video 20 minutes after trading has begun. Volpara last time we looked was up about 7% and Telix Pharmaceutical share price was up about 8%. So look out for videos on those two companies over the next week or two weeks. Now onto Little Green Pharma, and this is a medicinal cannabis producer, manufacturer, distributor. In fact, they are a vertically integrated company. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But this company was founded in 2016 with the aim of improving the quality of life for a child depilated with seizures. And that's where medicinal cannabis comes into play because there are a lot of conditions out there that there are no alternatives apart from medicinal cannabis and i have read a lot that medicinal cannabis sometimes is a last resort for these sort of conditions and it's really fascinating that over the last say 20 30 years we are changing our perception on cannabis cannabis has a lot of benefits so people just think there's just these uh, slackers smoking pot that sort of thing but cannabis has a lot of really good benefits and i think the world is finally opening its opening its up up its eyes to realize the benefits. And LG or Little Green Farmer has a lot of products that they do sell right now, including LGP Classic. Now they have different proportions of THC and CBD in their products. This particular product on the left here has equal amount of THC, 10 milligrams and 10 milligrams of CBD as well. Little Green Pharma is a vertically integrated business, and this is their business model straight from their prospectus because this company IPO'd on the ASX in February 2020. 
So it starts at the cultivation of production, production end, moves to manufacturing, and then ends up at distribution. They've also included educational programs and IP and R&D in this particular slide. But they are a vertically integrated company with a focus, it seems, on Europe. It's really interesting here also in the IP and R&D section, they mentioned a non-binding agreement with OBJ Limited to progress development of alternative delivery systems. OBJ have changed their name, so I'm not sure about that non-binding agreement with that particular company. So this particular slide does come from almost three years ago, but really the business model has not changed in terms of this company being vertically integrated. The current CEO of Little Green Farmer is Fletta Solomon, and it seems like she also might be the founder of this company because it just mentions here that uh, she has grown the company from a medicinal cannabis startup to an interesting leading medicinal cannabis brand in Australia and overseas. Now to some facts in regards to Little Green Farmer. I've already mentioned they were founded in 2016. In fact, it was October 2016. Listed on the ASX, and this was really bad timing, if you look at it in a very cynical and pessimistic way, really bad timing because they listed on the ASX on the 20th of February, 2020. There was only one other company that listed just prior to the COVID-19 financial panic, and that was Kaiser Reef, if I remember correctly. And then we went like two or three months without a company listing on the ASX. And you'll see the share price when I show you the chart. The share price, as soon as Little Green Farmer listed on the ASX, fell off a cliff, and then it fairly recovered fairly well after that. One of the major shareholders, in fact, the largest shareholder of this company is Hancock Prospecting, 10.5% of the company. And yes, you would be right. Hancock Prospecting is Gina Reinhart's company. So Gina Reinhart has an interest in this company. In fact, they gave Little Green Farmer, if I remember correctly, about $15 million in a recent capital raising. So Gina Reinhart is not only in mining and agriculture, she's also into these uh, sort of medicinal cannabis type companies. The market cap of Little Green Farm at 19 cents is not too high, $50 million. And the reason I say not too high is based off the receipts and revenue growth this company is experiencing right now. Only 261 million shares on issue, but that is growing because this company has uh, done quite a few capital raisings over the past. And recently they did a couple, another capital raising, a $4 million capital raising in the last quarter. And the T code for Little Green Farmer could it be anything else but LGP. Before we have a look at Little Green Farmer's December core results for financial year 23, let's just go back one year ago just to see how this company has progressed. And if we look at the December quarter for financial year 22, $4.9 million of receipts, and the company was operating cash flow negative by $2.6 million, even though they did receive almost $2 million in government grants and tax incentives. So this company one year ago was bleeding a lot of cash. And if you just look at the, the year to date, which was only six months, they bled almost $8.6 million of cash and the cash on hand was dropping at this point in time. So no wonder this company has done quite a few capital raisings because they are bleeding through a lot of cash. And that's not even mentioning the capital expenditure this company is uh, having to do each and every quarter. In this particular quarter, they spent $1.2 million on capital expenditure. So even though the revenue and receipts for this company are growing at a pretty good rate, they are still burning through a lot of cash. And if we take a look at the most recent quarter for the company, things are starting to look better and better for this company. Almost operating cash flow positive, only negative by 542,000. But in saying that, they also received $2.3 million in government grants and tax incentives. And if you take that away, they were operating cash flow negative by about $2.8 million. However, recess of customers is growing, is now up to $6 million, but spending is still quite high and is still increasing. Product manufacturing operating costs, $4.4 million. Staff costs, $3.1 million. So those two costs alone exceed receipts for customers by over $1.4 million. But still, things are moving in the right direction for this company. They also did that capital raising, a $4 million capital raising, which increased their cash on hand to $7.1 million. So more than likely, unless this company... Um, starts not burning through as much cash. There's still that potential that uh, Little Green Farmer will still have to do more capital raisings in the future. One section of the Appendix 4C or 5B I never skip is Section 7. Now, the majority of companies releasing these core reports 
don't have any debt, but some do. And I want to see or make sure that the debt in these companies aren't climbing with each successive quarter. That would be an immediate and severe red flag, in my opinion. The other thing I look at is the particulars of any financing facilities or debt. I don't want to see interest rates of 15 to 20%. I have seen that with some of these sort of small type companies. Now, Little Green Farmer does have a little bit of debt, $5.8 million of debt, and the financing facilities are held with National Australia Bank. I loan 3.77 million with an interest rate of 3.79% and equipment finance of $2 million with a variable interest rate. They also mentioned down here in regards to an acquisition by Little Green Farmer Denmark, there's still $3.1 million of uh, debt there at an interest rate of 8.57%. So if Little Green Farmer doesn't increase the debt at ridiculous rates over the next few quarters, I think $5.8 million is easily handled by or should be easily handled by this company. It does seem like Little Green Farmer is really focused on Europe right now and selling their products. And this particular European sales pipeline image was found in the company's Appendix 4C commentary. They have quite a few products with partners. And one of the partners is the Italian government. Over the next two years, they are expecting to increase the amount of products they are selling in these European companies. They also, or countries, they also have a total European or European and UK sales pipeline totaling $43.2 million. Now to the receipts history for Little Green Farmer. And this is one of the things I always look at for companies releasing their appendix 4C or 5B, particularly 4C. I want to see receipts growing consistently through time. Now, there has been research done on revenue, and one of the best indicators for a company's uh, market-beating performance in terms of share price and valuation is revenue increasing through time, which actually makes sense when you think about it on a deep, deep level. Anyway, receipts for Little Green Farmer have been increasing at a consistent rate over the past two years since they IPO'd on the ASX. So when they IPO'd on the ASX, they only had receipts of $600,000 odd, $630,000 in the first quarter, and then $670,000 in the June quarter of that year. And then we saw receipts get above $1 million. And over the last two years, we have seen receipts grow from $1.6 million at a low in the September quarter 2021, up to $6 million in the most recent quarter. One thing I did notice when I look at this receipts history, it does look like potentially the December quarter, or there could be some seasonality when it comes to this company, simply because the best quarters and the record-breaking quarters for this company tend to be the December quarters. We saw that in 2021 with 1.9 million. That was a record quarter. And then last year, that was a record quarter with $4.9 million of receipts. And the most recent quarter was another record quarter for this company. But overall, in January, receipts are climbing through time. Now let's have a look at the charts for Little Green Pharma. Now the company listed on the ASX, February 2020, one of the last companies to list on the ASX before COVID-19. So you can see a plunge in the share price of this company from uh, about a high of 50 cents all the way down to about 17 and a half cents over a four week period. But just like many other companies on the ASX, there was a sharp turnaround in the fortunes with the share price fortunes of the company. And the share price went from that low of 17.5 cents in March of 2020 to a high of almost $1 or just over $1 at the start of 2021. You can see a massive up week where the share price went from around about 60 cents to over 90 cents in one week. So there was a 50% share price rise in one week, but that was a height in the hype of this company. And then the share price moved into a downtrend in the middle part of 2021 and has remained in that downtrend until now. Now, the share price has retreated all the way down to the lows we saw during the COVID-19 financial panic of 17 and a half cents. So it seems like 17 and a half cents is a nice support level for this company. And that is the all-time low share price for Little Green Pharma. And the share price has, going, has been going sideways over the past three months, just above that 17 and a half cent level. Now onto the daily chart for Little Green Farmer. This is the 18 month chart. The reason I want to go that far back is because you can see that transition from positive sentiment to negative sentiment 
or the transition from the share price being an uptrend to a downtrend in the middle part of 2021. Share price reached a high of about 95 cents in the start of July of that year. And then we saw the share price really struggle to get any higher. In fact, we saw a couple of lower highs. We also saw a couple of lower lows. And that is telling us that the share price is trying to move into a downtrend. And then that downtrend was confirmed during September of 2021. And then it also coincided with the shift in sentiment from positive to negative. And the share price has remained in downtrend ever since then. However, you could argue with me right now that the downtrend is possibly coming to an end with the share price going sideways or consolidating over the past two and a half months. However, in saying that, one of the reasons why the share price has been going sideways or consolidating over that period of time is because the share price has reached that very important and strong support level at 17 and a half cents, which was a low during the COVID-19 financial panic. And the reason why 17 and a half cents or the lows during the COVID-19 financial panic are good support levels is because there would be some investors out there who know the share price reached a low of 17 and a half cents during that period of time, during COVID-19 financial panic, and see the share price get to the level over the past two and a half months and think there's probably some value here. So right now, those sort of investors are supporting the share price. That's why the share price is struggling to get below that level. So if we do see share price break below that level on strength, that would be a bearish sign. So what I am looking forward right now for Little Green Farmer is any sign of a breakout right now out of this consolidation period. Preferably any breakout would coincide with some positive financial news from the company. But right now, share price is going sideways. No need to rush into Little Green Farmer, even if you are very bullish about the long-term future of this company. That's all I have for this look at Little Green Farmer's Appendix 4C for the December quarter of financial year 23. If you have any thoughts about this company or any other company on the ASX, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your questions, your comments. So leave those in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.